G'day everyone, Paul Daniels here again and welcome back to What I Fix Daily. So today we've got a iPhone 4, one of the old ones, and it won't power up, or at least it wasn't powering up, and it's at a situation now where we're essentially going to recover the data and the phone is basically puts into retirement now. Uh, initially the phone was completely cooking up on the uh, top camera side here, getting very hot to the point, uh, camera over here rather, uh, very hot to the point where it would almost burn you. And I suspect that's obviously what killed the battery and stopped it coming up and everything. So I removed that. It's still got uh, some level of a short on the board somewhere and the power is rather marginal when I do power it up. As a consequence, when I try to do a backup, using iDevice backup to it fails part way through with a device not available and I have to keep pulling the cord out try resetting it things like that and then resuming the backup so this isn't the first time that I've had a phone do this to me for different reasons where they constantly um, usually they come up with delay waiting for two seconds, fault, whatever, and never seem to come out of that. So to get around that, I've got my USB controlled USB switch, which will be used to turn on and off this connection. I will point out that I have tried the USB reset software trick. It doesn't work with this particular fault. So we're going for the full hardware trick to do this. I've also modified the software iDevice backup to so that instead of it coming up and saying uh, waiting two seconds and trying again I just make it terminate on the spot and we put that together into a script and I will now go and show us how that works so, all right. so we're at the folder where I want to do the backup and I'll just show you the script it's fairly simple just basically turn on the power, we wait a couple of seconds and we go into this effectively an infinite loop. We attempt to do the backup, it's just a normal full backup, and then we check the exit code. Now, just a bit of uh, debugging there for me, if the exit code isn't zero, we switch off the USB link, we sleep a little bit, and then we switch it back on wait five seconds and come back up to here and try again if we do have success then we break out of the loop and now backup is done so it's very simple uh, I'll show or link in the patch for the um, iDevice backup 2 program to be able to do this it's extremely simple it's only like one line uh, okay so let's commence our recovery and see if this works Alright, here we go, we had a bit of a... Oh, gee whiz, really having a rough time already. Like I said, this isn't the first device that I've had doing this, which is why I actually eventually created this modification. What would be more ideal is if we could actually find the primary cause of the whole fault in the first place. It's some sort of power issue or short on the board. And yeah, if it was any worse and the phone wasn't coming up at all, I'd certainly dive in and go looking for it. But at this point, given that the phone does come up and that I am able to get this data off even if it's in pieces at a time, I prefer to go for this option while I can. Because you always run the risk of causing more damage if you... Oop, there it goes, drops out again. Um, <clears throat> you always risk more damage if you go in and try soldering things around. Perhaps not so bad on things like the iPhone 4, 4S, where the components are still fairly large, but certainly quite a bit more of a nightmare when uh, you're dealing with the likes of the latest iPhones.
Now, as far as I know, this phone has about uh, two or three gigabytes of uh, information on it. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Let's see, we're sitting at fifteen percent there, which is interesting. I'm not too sure exactly how our device back up to does its percentage calculations. I get the feeling it might be relative to the amount of data it still has to recover with each pass. So if it fails again and it goes back into the recovery, it will assume whatever's remaining to be recovered uh, is the full 100% and work from that. If you haven't used the whole Lib iMobile device um, toolkit and you are on Linux, it is something you might want to dig into and have a look around with. There's a IRC support channel. It's not very active, but there are some very well clued up people on there. Looks like I'm having a better run now. Let's hope it gets to the end. It'll be at 76%. I use this tool a lot, even for phones that I haven't got any problems, just simply to do backups for people. Or if you get situations where you're not too sure how iTunes is going to react to the phone, just use this. Okay, we're good. We're done. That's great. So I should be able to unback all that, which is basically you decode or rearrange all the um, encoded file names into human readable ones. That's it. Alright, everything worked. That's great. And uh, let's have a look at the um, data usage of the unback. And yep, there's about 2.2 .2 gigs, so everything's here. Excellent. Happy with that. Sorry about the little bit of hiccup there. Wondering, my brain's sort of rotting out on me. It is almost 2 o'clock in the morning, so I suppose that's to be expected. I'll leave all the information about the programs that I've used. Um, the actual USB switch device, you can get them through a variety of uh, supplies. Uh, you can even use like a Raspberry Pi to do it with the relay switching. All you are doing is uh, just switching the um, positive voltage line on it in the USB 2 uh, four wire system and that's it nice and simple okay well thanks very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time